This is Seven National News and in our top story. President His Highness Sheikh Khalifa bin Zayed Al Nahyan has ordered the release of 969 prisoners who were held for various crimes and the settlement of their financial liabilities on the occasion of the holy month of Ramadan. According to a report by Emirates News Agency WAM, President Khalifa's pardon is a gesture which demonstrates His Highness's wish to grant prisoners a chance to begin a new life and ease the suffering of their families. The UAE Vice President, Prime Minister and Ruler of Dubai, His Honor Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid Al Maktoum, has reviewed steps for the implementation of the national agenda which was launched last January. The implementation of the agenda over the next seven years aims to achieve the UAE Vision 2021, which coincides with the Silver Jubilee of the inception of the UAE as a modern state. During the review, which was also attended by the Cabinet Affairs Minister Mohammed Abdullah Al Gargawi and by Director of Protocol and Hospitality Khalifa Said Suleiman, His Highness reiterated the need for cooperation in the national effort and to continue to develop systems, mechanisms, and methodologies of the government to work in line with the agenda in order to achieve the UAE's future aspirations as the country pursues its leadership aspirations across a number of fields. The national agenda includes objectives and projects in sectors of education, healthcare, economy, police, housing, infrastructure and government services. Sheikh Mohammed urged leaders, officials and employees in all government agencies to promptly follow up on the stages and steps of implementing the national agenda and went on to say that when we launched the national agenda for the UAE Vision 2021, we stressed the need to work as one team to achieve the objectives. And today we affirm that work, creativity and excellent performance are one of the means to achieve the objectives. Sixty private schools in the Emirate of Sharjah will increase the tuition fees by 2 to 5 percent for the upcoming 2014-15 academic year. Hessa al Khaja, the head of private and quality education at Sharjah Educational Zone, stated in a local report that 60 private schools will increase their tuition fees in the 2014-15 academic year after they received official approval. She added that the Educational Zone approved the tuition fees increase requests submitted by the schools after a committee was set up by the Special Education Department to examine the requests. The committee visited the schools and assessed them as per the ministry's criteria which include the status of the school building, the quality of the administrative, educational and technical cadre to make sure the schools are eligible. The Sharjah Educational Zone had earlier warned schools against increasing their fees without obtaining approval from the ministry and other educational bodies. Dubai residents have been urged to switch off all non-essential home appliances and rationalise the use of electricity during peak hours, which are between noon and 6pm. As part of Dubai Electricity and Water Authority's peak load campaign, DEWA's campaign encourages residents to use, reduce water consumption as well as power usage as part of its commitment to sustainable development. Officials from DEWA stated that to achieve the Dubai Integrated Energy Strategy 2030 to reduce energy demand by 30%, DIWA has launched several awareness campaigns and initiatives to preserve natural resources for generations to come. The Peak Load campaign contributes to raising awareness among DIWA's customers on the importance of avoiding the use of equipment and electrical appliances at peak times. Additionally, commercial and industrial customers are encouraged to shift their less critical energy operations from peak times to off-peak hours as part of the campaign. DIWA officials also pointed out that air conditioning represents about 60% of the load during peak time consumption. By reducing air conditioning even marginally, such as switching it off when not needed, or by adjusting the thermostat, it is possible for consumers not only to lower their electricity bills, but also increase the overall reliability and efficiency of the electrical system. The Public Transport Agency of Roads and Transport Authority in Dubai has kick-started a campaign to monitor illegal passengers' transport practices between various Emirates of the UAE. The aim is to realise the vision of the RTA Safe and Smooth Transport for All campaign in a concentrated effort aimed to uproot this practice which poses a genuine threat to individuals and the community. Dr Yusuf Al Ali, the CEO of RTA Public Transport Agency, was quoted in local reports as saying that it was decided to unleash these campaigns in December 2013 in a bid to mitigate the huge number of individuals detected using private vehicles to transport individuals against the law 
adding that last year, before the launch of the campaign, a total of 2,647 offences were reported and about 1,344 offences were reported last December. Intensive efforts were made to crack down the practice this year and during the period from March 10 to April 10, the number of offences was substantially diminished to about 866. According to the World Health Organization, obesity has nearly doubled worldwide since 1980. More than 1.4 billion adults aged 20 and older were overweight in 2008. While in 2012, more than 40 million children under the age of 5 were overweight or obese. Locally, experts say there is also a rise in obesity and diabetes. In an effort to further raise awareness and address the big obesity challenge, the Dubai Healthcare City organized a media roundtable with experts. Nutritionist Dr. Karavitian Myri highlighted the dangers of crash and fad diets. She also discussed how increased stress and lack of sleep contribute to weight gain. Meanwhile, Dr. Aladdin Sakhir, an endocrinologist, spoke about the rising number of obese children who are also being diagnosed with hypertension and type 2 diabetes. He cited a study conducted by Dr. Al Junaibi in Abu Dhabi, which found that 34% of 1,400 Emirati school children examined from grade 1 to 12 are obese. Among the main factors are poor diet and a sedentary lifestyle. He said there are a host of diseases that could result from this if neglected. In addition, there are also social and emotional complications such as low self-esteem and bullying, behaviour and learning problems, as well as depression. Sometimes uh, pediatricians do not know that this is type 2 and uh, w when they see that the, the, the adolescent is diabetic, they would give him insulin and he would have hypoglycemia. So we must suspect type 2 diabetes in an obese ch child who has uh, very high glucose. The second th uh, thing I, I told you is uh, hypertension. We have hypertension in uh, children, more and more, especially in adolescents, and th their, uh, their blood pressure would be more than 14 sometimes, and this uh, requires treatment. The third thing is lipids. We have uh, more and more uh, hypercholesterol in children, which was zero in the past. Now we have uh, so many children, obese children, who have uh, cholesterol. And if it's neglected, for example, they, they may have uh, cardiovascular accidents in the age of 30 or 35. I would like to remind the parents to survey their children, their obese children, and to encourage them to do sports and to, for example, to, to let them uh, play video games games only one hour per day or internet sit for internet only half an hour per day and encourage them to for sport and to reduce their uh, their weight this is very important by sport and by diet and finally in the bulletin the concept of a competition between franchise owned teams has proven to be quite popular in cricket with the IPL the innovative idea will now be introduced in tennis with the international premier tennis league where the UAE will have its very own team represented by star players. At a press conference, the star-studded lineup of the Dubai-based IPTL franchise UAE Royals was announced, which will feature a total of eight players, including world number two Novak Djokovic and Caroline Wozniacki. The UAE Royals will compete against three other teams, also featuring some of the best ATP and WTA players, represented by India, who will have the current world number one Rafael Nadal, Philippines will include Andy Murray and the Singaporean franchise featuring Thomas Burdich for the tournament prize money of one million US dollars. The IPTL is scheduled to be held between the 28th of November to the 13th of December, where the matches will take place in each city over the course of three days. While Dubai will host the final round from the 11th to the 13th of December. We are happy that we have somebody like Novak Djokovic uh, participating in the league and he's been very excited. We met him last week in London and he expressed his, his gratitude that he was picked for the Dubai team. He has obviously very good memories, he's a three-time winner in Dubai and uh, he, he likes the place. Uh, but at the same time, this is a team competition, so we need to make sure that we have uh, uh, some other players to make up the team. And I think we got very fortunate, I mean, Karolina Wozniacki and Martina Hingis are, are big, big names. Uh, uh, we have Richard Gasquet who just came on board, but at the same time also somebody like uh, Malik Jaziri, the best Arab player, is going to make up the team. Speaking during the press conference, the five-time Dubai Duty Free Tennis Championship doubles winner Mahesh Bhupati, who also founded the concept, said that the new format with NBA-style entertainment will be revolutionary for the sport. 
Each match between the teams is expected to last for three hours and will consist of five sets to be played in different formats, which include men's singles, women's singles, men's doubles, mixed doubles and a former, ch former champion singles. A win in each category will carry one point for the team. According to Mahesh, the concept should create more enthusiasm for the sport. We feel that the concept uh, has all the ingredients to be able to make a you know big impact on the sport. I think uh, you know we've got the stars, which is the main part, and then we've got the entertainment aspect. We've got the innovations within the format, uh, you know, shorter sets, and uh, obviously for TV and broadcast, shorter time frames. So you know the ingredients are all there now. We have to just make sure that it all comes together well, and uh, you know we've got our fingers crossed. This is the only slot we really have if we want to have uh, you know participation from the top players. Uh, so you know well, luckily for us, we were able to get a lot of them on board, and you know now we're you know hoping to execute a good job.